The movie begins by presenting a grim future, where a man named Tony is embarking on a flight to a desert in search of the prototype. With great precision, he scans the area until he successfully pinpoints its location, buried under the barren wasteland. Upon excavation, the prototype is unveiled, turning out to be a human encased in a life-sustaining pod. This introduces us to Garrett Brown, who has managed to survive by consuming a blue liquid created by the aliens that conquered Earth. In addition, Tony discloses his identity as a clone of Garrett's former partner and reveals the harrowing truth that the entire Earth's population has been wiped out due to a nuclear war, leaving Garrett as the sole survivor. Next, Tony urges Garrett to dive into his memories to see if they can uncover anything from the past to progress forward in their journey. Unfortunately, having been buried for over 300 years, Garrett has no memories of his past. As he tries to grasp the situation, he suddenly recalls someone known as Reverend Hope. Traveling back 300 years in time, we encounter Reverend Jeremiah Hope, a preacher infamous as the False Messiah, responsible for the tragic demise of over 5,000 men, women, and children. Moreover, Hope is exposed for allegedly misusing the donation money from Hope Ministries to finance profitable businesses, all the while keeping his followers in the dark about the true allocation of funds. In response, SciTech, a specialized investigative agency comprised of the finest agents from elite organizations worldwide, was formed to bring down this deceitful profit. Returning to the present, hostile alien terrorists from the planet Nobus arrive with intentions to conquer Earth, leading Tony and Garrett to search for safety elsewhere. Afterward, Tony reveals his plan to lead them to the agency's secret underground facility, where agents manage to clone themselves after acquiring alien technology. Soon after, it is disclosed that the agency buried Garrett under the guidance of a man named Virgil Conway, who sought to resurrect him in the future. Later, Garrett remembers his involvement in a United States government agency, where he operated under the Elias Number 2. He vividly remembers leading an investigation aimed at thwarting the plans of terrorist aliens who intend to take over the planet, as well as uncovering the mysterious disappearances in Reverend Hope's discovery camps. In a flashback, Garrett hands a CD to an agent under the alias Number One, which supposedly contains potential evidence against Hope. Later that night, Garrett and another agent named Clay, under the alias Number Three, gather to discuss their investigation on Reverend Hope. Clay then presents evidence, shared by Virgil Conway, linking Future Corp to Hope Ministries and implicating the Agent Number One in both their operations. Additionally, they received intel revealing that someone from Future Corp is set to deliver a package to Number One the following night. Consequently, the agents consider apprehending the culprits during whatever illicit activity they may be engaged in. Later that night, as anticipated, a mysterious Future Corp employee discreetly places a package in Number One's car trunk. He is then confronted by Clay slash Number Three, who accuses him of being a traitor to the agency. Unfortunately, this confrontation escalates into a brutal altercation, and ultimately, Number One takes Clay's life. Just at that moment, Garrett arrives on the scene and shoots Number One, seizing both the package and a compact case from his pocket. Upon further inspection, the compact case is found to contain a strange blue liquid shrouded in mystery. Following this, Garrett, aka number two, heads to the agency and observes the disturbing sight of almost everyone killed. Surprisingly, his girlfriend, Jenna, is alive, though severely injured, and she reveals that number one was the perpetrator behind this. In a bizarre turn of events, Number One materializes inexplicably behind Garrett at his safe house. Although Garrett shoots him several times, he survives, leading him to conclude that the blue liquid must be a source of the agent's extraordinary abilities. Garrett then drinks the liquid, ignoring Number One's warning not to consume it, and drops dead almost instantly. Afterward, Number One extracts a chip from the compact case and implants it into Garrett's forehead to gather information. Next, Number One teleports himself to a mysterious alien warlord who embeds the chip into his own forehead, allowing him to assimilate all the information it holds. Subsequently, 
Hines apprehends number one and accuses him of the murders of several agency members. When questioned about the package found in his car, it is revealed to contain blueprints for the upcoming camp of Hope Ministries, supplied by his contact within the ministry. Despite the persistent interrogation, number one remains tight-lipped and refuses to disclose any further details. Furthermore, he asserts to be unaware of Clay slash number three's death, but insists that Garrett, number two, is no longer alive. Continuing from there, number one gets escorted to another room, where a perplexing scene unfolds. Garrett appears to be miraculously alive and caught by the agency. The agency's chief, Hines, proceeds to interrogate both of them and levels allegations against Garrett for the murders committed within the agency. In response, Garrett turns the tables and accuses number one of being the mastermind behind the agency members' deaths, including that of number three. He then confidently asserts his ability to provide evidence that exposes number one's sinister plot to undermine their investigation of Reverend Hope. However, Hines falsely claims to possess evidence incriminating Garrett and presses him about how he managed to survive when he was believed to be dead when they discovered him. After a while, number one eliminates Hines' men before attributing Garrett's newfound inexplicable strength to the same blue liquid, cautioning him that its effects will eventually prove fatal. In the prison, Tony brings Garrett to a secret facility where a surprising encounter awaits him, a clone of his former agency superior, Hines. At this moment, Garrett is encouraged to delve into his past and retrieve as much information as possible to unlock Virgil Conway's message. As the story unfolds, it is unveiled that Garrett has been exposed to chemical warfare during his service in the Persian Gulf. Consequently, his DNA underwent a mutation when it interacted with the mysterious blue liquid, an alien supplement that granted him extraordinary strength. With this newfound knowledge, Hines and Tony devise a plan to synchronize Garrett's brain with a computer system, enabling them to access his memories and activate Virgil's crucial message. This brings us to a flashback where we are finally introduced to Virgil. He is shown watching an interview featuring the controversial prophet, Reverend Hope. During the interview, the interviewer raises allegations about Hope misusing charitable donations to create a corporate empire. However, Hope refutes these claims, disclosing that the donation money is being utilized to finance his visionary discovery camps, a utopian city devoid of crime and animosity. As the interview progresses, Reverend Hope delivers a dire prophecy, warning of an impending catastrophic earthquake set to strike in just five days. Subsequently, we find Virgil in possession of the mysterious blue liquid. Garrett, who had been secretly monitoring him, approaches him and reveals his identity as Clay, number three's partner. Soon after, Virgil discloses a stunning truth. He is an alien from the planet Nobus, and the blue liquid serves as a dietary supplement that grants a tenfold increase in strength. While beings from his home planet utilize this liquid to adapt to Earth's environment, no human test subjects have survived its effects, with Garrett being the only exception. In the course of their conversation, Garrett inquires about Reverend Hope's involvement in all these affairs. It is then revealed that the controversial prophet is merely a human puppet controlled by an alien mastermind named Alatarek. Virgil further explains that Alatarek plans to exploit Earth's natural resources and manufacturing capabilities to construct weaponry. His ultimate scheme involves utilizing the human population as soldiers to support his conquest before returning to the planet Nobus to continue his war campaign. Moreover, Virgil reveals that Pyak, whom Gareth knows well as number one, was the most dangerous terrorist on planet Nobus. Upon Alatarek's arrival on Earth, the two formidable beings formed an unholy alliance. Moments later, Virgil opens up about his daring infiltration into Alatarek's group. It turns out that he deliberately leaked their positions to his own people resulting in the destruction of a significant portion of Alatarek's facilities. However, this cunning move also exposed Virgil's cover, leading to his capture by the terrorists. The kidnappers then held him as a bargaining chip, hoping to secure leverage for their cause. Virgil then recounts how the Nobus Navy began closing in on the terrorists. Faced with imminent capture, Pyek and Alatarek made a desperate escape attempt by navigating their spaceship through a dark matter region. 
propelling them at unimaginable speeds. Eventually, they restrained Virgil in a gas chamber and mercilessly ejected him into the ocean, believing it to be his end. Against all odds, the gas chamber malfunctioned, allowing him to survive. After the shocking revelation, Garrett implores Virgil to aid them in their mission to defeat the menacing aliens, but Virgil adamantly refuses. However, Virgil does offer to provide Garrett with all the valuable information he possesses about Pyak and the alien boss, Alatarek. Despite this, tensions escalate and a physical altercation ensues between the two allies and Garrett ends up shooting Virgil. Returning to Virgil's residence, Garrett confronts Rosa, Virgil's girlfriend, and exposes his true identity as an alien. Shocked and angered by the revelation, she storms out of the scene, leaving Garrett to persuade Virgil to join forces once again. However, they receive a message from Pyak right then, who claims to have captured Rosa. Moments later, he appears before them through a portal, revealing information about Reverend Hope's whereabouts, and orders Garrett to assassinate him to protect Rosa. Back in the present, Heinz shares a startling revelation with Garrett that Pyak's sinister plan involves cloning Garrett to create an invincible army. Amidst this revelation, they manage to unlock the message from Virgil Conway, which discloses the location of a mysterious hidden city. However, their plans are interrupted as Pyak and his army arrive at the scene. In the end, Heinz sacrifices himself by detonating explosives, eliminating Pyak's army and creating an opportunity for Tony and Garrett to escape. Following the harrowing escape, with the last of the liquid in hand, Garrett drinks it before embarking on a journey with Tony to explore the hidden city. To their astonishment, they discover that the city exists within a colossal bubble, one that Tony cannot pass through. Undeterred, Garrett ventures into the bubble alone and stumbles upon a magnificent palace, where he is greeted by Queen Elona. She reveals that her planet suffered devastation at the hands of Pyak and his forces, and they have since rebuilt the society in this hidden refuge. Most importantly, Queen Elona claims that Garrett is the chosen one, destined to save mankind, and that his survival holds the key to granting humanity a second chance. Queen Elona reveals the critical ceremony necessary to send Garrett back in time and save humanity. Bizarrely, this involves Garrett plunging a dagger into his own heart, but he firmly refuses to sacrifice himself in this way. In the midst of this, Pyak and his army breach the palace's defenses, launching a brutal attack. Fortunately, Tony somehow manages to enter the palace and lends a helping hand to Garrett in their fight against the invaders. As the chaos ensues, Queen Elona gets shot, but before she succumbs to her injuries, she imparts a precious gift to Garrett, a necklace with the power to erase Pyak's memories. This newfound weapon becomes Garrett's final hope. At last, only Garrett and Pyak remain standing, so Garrett seizes the opportunity to use the Queen's necklace to erase Pyak's reign of terror once and for all. Following this, Garrett pierces the dagger into his heart, taking him back to the past. In the year 1880, he finds himself face to face with the town sheriff, who initially dismisses his time travel tale as dubious. However, as he shares more details, the sheriff begins to entertain the possibility that Garrett might be telling the truth. Soon enough, Pyak also arrives in the town, and the two rivals are brought together once more. Pyak reveals that there was a glitch in the time travel system, leaving them stranded in the past without their armies, and the potent blue liquid that once granted them incredible strength. As chaos descends upon the town, Garrett and Pyak have another intense encounter. Pyak attempts to bribe Garrett, urging him to use the dagger to return to the future where they can reclaim their powers and resume their sinister plans. However, things take an unexpected turn as Garrett shoots Pyak to seize control of the dagger and stabs both himself and his rival with the dagger, thereby binding their fates together. Subsequently, Garrett finds himself in an unknown future where he is handed a vial containing a red liquid. However, the significance and potential power of this vial remain a mystery as the movie comes to an abrupt end.